An aerial acrobat changing the face of skydiving forever? Believe it! Dive into the story of Katarina Paulus, the genius behind the first collapsible parachute. While many remember her thrilling jumps, it's her invention that changed the game for skydivers globally. Welcome to her story, Unforgettable Women. In today's video, we explore how Katarina ensured safety took flight. The question is, how did she come up with the idea? To understand that, we go back to the beginning. Katerina was born on December 22nd, 1868, 150 years ago in Zellhausen, Germany to a working class family. She had a thing for acrobats from a young age. As a kid, her favorite activity was stretching a clothesline across the yard and learning how to walk a tightrope. Unfortunately, life dealt Paulus a bad set of cards from the start. Her father died when she was only 19, leaving Kate and her family in a difficult position. How did young Katerina deal with it? Well, she stepped up. She took up seamstressing to support her family. After that, fate led her to Herman Lottmann, a well-known balloonist who was looking for an assistant. Thankfully, Katerina's skills with the needle made her the perfect candidate. She repaired balloons and somewhere along the way, also caught feelings for Lottmann. Eventually, the two tied the knot. In Herman, Paulus found the love of her life, both romantically and professionally. She also discovered her love for parachuting. The two embarked on a number of aeronautical adventures and tours, dazzling people with their ballooning and parachuting stunts. A few years later, she welcomed her son, Herman Paulus, and it looked like Katerina had found her paradise on Earth. She had her perfect family, and was doing something she was passionate about with the man she loved. On July 19, 1893, Kate achieved her first milestone by landing a balloon on her own for the first time after Herman had jumped off. And then four days later, she made history by climbing 1,200 meters with the balloon and becoming the first woman in Germany to parachute and the third woman to do so in the entire world. But Katarina's little bubble of happiness burst before she knew it. In 1894, the young inventor was on a routine joint jump with her husband, but his parachute failed to deploy in time, forcing Katarina to watch Herman fall to his death. Unfortunately, life didn't catch her a break. A year later, Kate also lost her son to diphtheria. These events devastated Katarina. She left working on parachutes and spent her days grieving the loss in bed for four months. Within the four walls of her house, only one question lingered on her mind. Could better equipment have changed her husband's fate? It almost seemed like an end to her journey as a ballooner. Thankfully, the world did not let Katerina retire. She'd gathered quite the following by this stage in her life, and her fans were not ready for a star like her to dim out. Hundreds of admirers sent letters of support to the parachute jumper, and eventually, Paulus found the strength to get back out there. With four new parachutes and a rejuvenated spirit, Katarina was back on the stage. She toured around Europe, putting on shows for people as Miss Polly, and made a name for herself in the pages of history as the first touring female aeronaut. Her set involved performing detailed acrobatic feats for thousands of attendees who definitely got more. Dressed in a sailor suit with powder pants and black boots, Kate was really someone to watch. One of her tricks involved riding a bicycle while suspended from a hot air balloons basket. During her time on the stage, Katarina had managed to log over an unbelievable 165 parachute jumps and rode over 510 balloon flights. On that note, Herman's death pushed Paulus to reimagine parachutes. The designs of her time posed many problems. For starters, they weren't reliable in case of strong winds, with the lead lines becoming dangerously tangled in midair. Not to mention that the old configurations had no concept of being compact. These parachutes took up a lot of space, which obviously did not make things any easier. So what did Kate do? Well, following Herman's death, she had a light bulb moment. She envisioned a foldable parachute, one that would not take up too much space. Her technique was ingenious, allowing the parachute to fold neatly and then unfold reliably when needed. With her designs finalized, 
Paulus went to the Imperial Patent Office in 1915. And guess who took notice? The military! They were truly impressed by what a young woman from a small town in Germany had managed to come up with. They were all over it. It's worth mentioning that Germany was in the First World War and was looking to explore all options to get the upper hand. And that's exactly what they saw in Kate's innovative redesign. So they commissioned her to produce 7,000 parachutes for the army. That's about 125 parachutes a week. She had some practice for sure, since she'd been making hundreds of parachutes out of her small apartment in 106 Gotthardstrauss along with her mother. To pull off the military's big order, Kate had to enlist in the services of a few other seamstresses, but she was still cutting each parachute herself. Kate ended up saving the lives of many as a seamstress, since before she came along, the German forces didn't believe in parachutes. Yup, they thought parachutes were for cowards and believed pilots were better off jumping without one or shooting themselves with a revolver. Paulus's contributions earned her a spot as a German advisor to the country's balloon reconnaissance troops. Eventually, the government recognized her efforts and awarded her the Merit Cross for war aid. What's interesting is that Kate didn't just reimagine the parachute and solve some of the most pressing problems when it came to parachuting. She was also the woman who came up with the drag chute. Have you ever seen someone parachute? There's a big parachute and a smaller one. Well, the smaller one is what you would call the drag chute. It works as an intentional breakaway system, slowing down the descent. And it wasn't featured in the initial designs of the parachute, not until Kate suggested it. This way, she single-handedly ensured safety at high altitudes as an aerial acrobat. That said, Kate continued working on improving parachute designs until she died. However, she did have to leave behind parachuting and balloon at the age of 46. Leave it to old age to get to the best of Kate died in her 60s on July 26, 1935, after having lived a full life as an international celebrity, a World War I military advisor, and an inventor of the ages. Her funeral was attended by a few, including renowned female pilots like Han Reich. All in all, Kate Paulus will always be remembered for her work on revolutionizing parachute design. If it weren't for her contributions, sport skydiving would not exist today. Her ideas gave German aerial forces a fighting chance and shaped the work of all those who came after her, making her a true trailblazer and a pioneer whose legacy is etched into the very fabric of skydiving and parachute technology. Her impact is felt every time someone takes that thrilling leap from an aircraft. And for that, we'll always remember her immense gratitude. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more exciting Her Story content just like this.